Hello and happy Sunday. I get a lot of requests for this video. Um, people ask me if I could recommend some books to start reading to understand more about the Kennedy assassination and why so many people have issues with the Warren Commission. Um, what books would I recommend? Um, so I thought I would take a little time this Sunday and show you some books that I own and what's significant about them. So naturally, if you wanted to start studying the Kennedy assassination, you would want to pick up a copy of the Warren Commission. Now, the Warren Commission has 26 volumes and this is obviously a condensed version with just the report and a few pictures of some of the evidence that they chose to put into it. Now, taken by itself, if you were to just read this book, you probably wouldn't find a whole lot unusual because this was, this includes the exhibits that most support the official investigation conclusion, which is that Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963, at, uh, after, after noon, before one, was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald from his vantage point in the Texas Book Suppository Building that's called the Sexton Building in Dallas. And that his final shot was a fatal hit to the head of President Kennedy. The second to final shot um, passed through President Kennedy and severely injured the governor of Texas who was sitting in front of him, Governor Connolly. And the, the first shot was a miss and a fragment of that bullet hit a bystander near the entrance to the Stimmons under the the triple over underpass the triple overpass on the entrance of the Stimmons freeway. So that's the official the official um story and that Oswald was a idealistic deranged man who um moved to Russia on his own, was obsessed with Russia and communism, and came back to the United States. And uh, after attempting to assassinate a conservative general named Walker, he then attempted and succeeded in assassinating President Kennedy. So, like, if you were to just read this, you would probably find a compelling case. But... Keep in mind, there are 26 volumes to the Warren Commission report. The first volume is the summary, which is this, and the other 25 volumes are the exhibits and evidence. And meant much of that, which is interviews, photographs, and so forth, is contradictory. And that's what gets us to the whole Kennedy conspiracy. Then, fast forward to... I believe it's 1975, there's a, a Senate subcommittee on assassinations. And among the assassinations they're talking about is President Kennedy. And then at that subcommittee, they said that there was a probable conspiracy due to since officially discredited acoustical evidence. Uh, that being one of the uh, motorcycle officers uh, broken... Uh, handlebar radio transmitter that supposedly captured the sounds of more than three gunshots. So that's in a nutshell what causes the conspiracies. And and then the fact is I think people were typically conspiracy minded. And I don't think you know you can get Mark Lane is very conspiracy minded. Um but this is the very first major uh scholarly work that was um that was submitting for your approval 
the idea that President Kennedy was assassinated and that Oswald was likely innocent. Mark Lane particularly focused on the idea that he is a lawyer, by the way, Mark Lane's an attorney, and he focused on the idea that Oswald was never given a trial, that uh, he was, which is true because Oswald was killed uh, two, uh, well, two days after the assassination by Jack Ruby, and therefore they defaulted to Oswald being the assassin and case closed. So Mark Lane produced this book, which um, he, had a, he had a hard time getting this published. He had to publish it in Europe. Um, finally got this, you know, in America. This is this is the uh, the American version. It's in great shape. Uh, one of my favorite pieces in my collection. But Mark Lane, love him or hate him, uh, did a lot of research, interviewed a lot of people, including Marines who were close to Lee Harvey Oswald. He interviewed people who worked for Jack Ruby. Um, he did his research and he decided that it was an assassination and that Oswald was probably innocent. Um, I always kind of recommend this book because um, this is Profiles in Courage, uh, penned by John F. Kennedy while he was convalescing after back surgery. And um, this was a, a labor of love for him, where he wanted to write a book about different um, people like Sam Houston, who uh, who stood up against uh, uh, overwhelming odds in the name of their principles. And um, this book is in incredibly good shape, so I try to be very careful when I handle it, being um, that this is uh, such a, I mean, such a pristine copy. John Quincy Adams was one of his subjects. Daniel Webster, Thomas Hart Bitten, Sam Houston, Edmund G. Ross, uh, Lu uh, Lucius Lamar, George Norris, Robert Taft, and he mentions other men of courage. Um, this is... Now, there's some dispute as to how much of the book he actually wrote. Uh... I have found that in the uh, year over the years, there's been a, a really major effort to trash Kennedy's name in every way, from calling him a plagiarist to saying he was an adulterer, and so many things. And I wonder, you know, it makes you wonder if they have been besmirching his character. So later on down the road, if they were to reveal that there was more to his killing that they would hope that people wouldn't have as much sympathy for him. I don't know. And look, I'm going to just point out right here, everything I'm talking about, I'm trying to be very, I want to point out that I'm not taking any sides. I'm trying to be as balanced as possible in this video. I'm just revealing what I know, and I'm not going to give you any opinion on what I think is right or wrong. Um, this is Crossfire, The Plot That Killed Kennedy by Jim Mars. Many uh, researchers from my generation consider this the Bible of the Kennedy conspiracy. Um, Jim Mars uh, was highly respected as um, a journalist and a researcher. And this was one of the two books, and uh, I'll show you the other one next, that was the inspiration for the movie JFK. And this is the other one. Um, the very first line in this book is very compelling. Well, the quote here, the great masses of the people will more easily fall victims to a great lie than to a small one. Um, the bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. That's attributed to Hitler, the Mein Kampf. Um, so the very first line in this is, do not trust this book. What he's trying to say is, don't trust anything. He's that baby boomer generation that is completely disillusioned by between uh, the Kennedy assassination and Watergate. And um, he, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you I agree with everything Jim Morris says, because some of the stuff he talks about is kind of wacky. 
I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it, 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 he challenges, he challenges me sometimes with the things he says. Some of it, though, I do find to be plausible, and that's what irritates me the most because sometimes you do find things that are, um, you know, good points, but then it's, uh, it's, um, buried but it's also presented with other points that are you know he's into aliens and mysticism and stuff that i'm not a big believer in another thing this is the uh the magic bullet theory that was put forth by arlen specter um one thing about this this makes a lot of sense if you were to assume that governor Connolly was sitting directly in front of president kennedy therefore this magic bullet thing would look silly to a person if they thought that that was the circumstances but we have to be fair here and state something that's not widely known is that while president kennedy was sitting on a proper seat in that car Connolly was sitting on a jump seat that was uh caddy cornered from kennedy it was a pop-out seat he and his wife were sitting in and he was diagonal from kennedy so the traject that lends more uh weight to the magic bullet theory when you consider the positions they were sitting in. So I'm not saying that case closed that you know explains everything, but I am saying that in a lot of these conspiracy books, they're not going to tell you necessarily all the things you need to know to make an opinion. Now, when, when Jim Mars starts talking about Lee Harvey Oswald and then Harvey Lee Oswald or something like that, that there were two people, I really find it difficult to believe. And one of, um, one of Mars's theories is that there were two people, Harvey Oswald and Lee Oswald. Uh, I, I don't buy that. Um, and uh, then he has some other good points he makes, but... There's the idea that some of these shooters, um, and this isn't, this isn't just Mars, but a lot of people believe that these were the shooters, some tramps who were taken off of a train car uh, when the Dallas police immediately after the shooting, and that one of them was Charles Harrison, one of them was, um, oh, what was that guy, E. Howard Hunt. I... Uh, I'm not sure if I believe that either. They've been identified. Um, and I don't, I've never seen a good enough picture that makes me think that they're not tramps. And I don't believe that that was Charles Harrison by looking at, I've seen lots of pictures of Charles Harrison. This is the Umbrella Man. Um, now this one is puzzling. He's sitting next to another guy who he didn't seem to know after immediately after the assassination. He, this man did open his umbrella when Kennedy's car passed him after the first shot. Many people interpreted that as a signal to other shooters to fire again. And it's a good argument because it was weird. There was no rain at that time, but there was rain that morning. So um, it is possible the man was out all day with an umbrella. Now, supposedly they found a man who was the umbrella man and stated that um he was opening the umbrella as some kind of allusion to neville chamberlain and kennedy but i find that wholly unbelievable too here is um the backyard photos of oswald uh, widely disputed they said that they could take the uh the face off each one and it would, would fit over each face could fit over the other ones and therefore it wasn't really his body his face was superimposed on the body and they proved and they said that because of the length of the his length from the angle of the camera changed significantly which is true but his face didn't change and also the shadow on his nose wasn't consistent with the shadow behind him um some experts i'm not a photographic expert so i can't tell you if that's true or not true Another exhibit they like to show is the, uh, well, that's a Sabo bullet. This is the idea that uh, a, a smaller bullet was pit, was put inside of a larger cartridge. And they, they claim to have found a piece of a Sabo bullet uh, at the scene. Um, Oswald and Death. 
so there's a lot of stuff in this book that in my opinion is, is just kind of crazy and it's hard for me to believe but he does make some interesting points too now this is jim garrison's on the trail of the assassins um this is the other bible from my generation of the kennedy assassination and this is the story of jim garrison and his case to um prosecute clay shaw the director of the dallas trademark for the assassination of kennedy and it was the only criminal case brought about uh after the assassination and this is clay shaw that's jim garrison um he there's the warren commission right here interesting note um the actual jim garrison portrayed chief justice warren in the movie jfk Uh, this is David Ferry, someone who Jim Garrison thought was tied up with like arranging an escape plane or something for the assassination. He was a, a cancer sufferer who was a pi uh, used to be a pilot with Eastern Airlines. Um, I don't. Once again, these are all mysterious characters. Clay Shaw is a mysterious character. Guy Bannister here is. That's. Uh, that is Dean Andrews. He was the uh, first attorney who was called for Oswald. Uh, Perry Russo was a, one of Jim Garrison's witnesses. Uh, he, he was not a very good witness. He claimed later that Jim Garrison had used drugs on him uh, to, get, to get testimony. Jim Garrison's case was not a very good case. I'm just going to say it. I... I, I I don't have a lot against Jim Garrison. I've enjoyed reading this book and I have read it. I've listened to it many times and I'm, I find this story incredibly fascinating. And there's definitely, he definitely found something going on, but I don't know if it was truly related to the assassination. He definitely found a, a, a nest of criminals. There's no doubt about that. Among them, David Ferry, Perry Russo, uh, he found some suspicious activity from Guy Bannister, whose office was in New Orleans. Uh, he found some connections of uh, he found some connections of Oswald in New Orleans, and I guess that's a good segue uh, to next book. I want to show you. Let me find it. Got a lot of books here. Oswald in New Orleans. A case for conspiracy with the CIA. Uh, Jim Garrison provides a forward in this book. Um, this is more of an in-depth study where it takes some of the points that Garrison made in his book and enhances them about everything they could find about uh, Oswald when he was in New Orleans and the activities he was in. He was uh, in an organization called the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. There's no, we don't know how many people were in that organization, if any. Uh, the office was close to Guy Bannister's, but it wasn't exactly like the same door. It, the same, there were two doors in a building that went into like uh, an alcove, but the offices were separately in the building. So um, there was, it, they kind of, Garrison kind of made out like they, they were the same office, but they weren't exactly. Um, so... Oswald was on TV debating with some Cubans. Um, he he was gained some notoriety, and this strongly suggested that he was being groomed as uh, a patsy. I get that. I really do. It's it's compelling. Oswald was a mysterious person. We we just don't know. I mean, and once again, I'm gonna put my disclaimer out there. I'm not saying anything, but I tell you what. You could have had much more of a suspicious situation um, about someone who mysteriously, you know, gets out of the Marine Corps, goes to the Soviet Union, gets a job there, marries the daughter of a Soviet colonel, KGB colonel, um, then, you know, come, is able to come back to America and then get a job first at a place, a cartography place where they make top secret maps and then get a job that's directly over the the uh, motorcade route of President King. So it is really weird. I'm not going to lie. It's strange.
there's a lot of strange things that happen. But this is another book I'd recommend. Uh, and if you're getting into that, this book was uh, put out in, I believe it was the 60s or 70s, um, when there was a fascination with Marina and Lee Oswald. Marina was his Russian wife, I told you about. That's her. Um, this was published in London in... Uh, 1977. So this is all about the relationship between Marina and Lee Oswald. So you might find some clues in this book to 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 learn a little bit about Oswald. Uh, what possibly could have been going on? It looks like some pages are stuck together here. To be very careful about that. It looks like um, it got hit by something. Uh, I'll work on that later. But this is the um, the book about Marina and Lee Oswald. And as you can see, there's a lot in here. And there is Marina Oswald as she co-op. She actually came out later and attacked the author for misleading her on helping her write this book. Interestingly. Um, here's another one, Manchester's book, Death of a President, another one of the scholarly studies done, this one was, uh, copyright 1967, which was four years after, around the time of Mark Lane's book, so, um, let me get some coffee in me. I lean heavily on these ones that were written closer to the time. It's being, uh, having more access to living witnesses and giving you a sense of how people were feeling after the assassination, the mindset of a lot of people. And many, many people at the time have told me, and I've talked to lots of people who were alive then, have told me that they felt like it was an assassination pretty early on. Okay, now going back a little bit to the New Orleans connection, this is Mafia Kingfish. And this is about Carlos Morcello's connection, which would connect also to New Orleans and, you know, possibly the Mafia's participation. Mm. If you watched that movie, The Irishman, you might have heard a line where Joe Pesci suggested that, you know, they uh, killed President Kennedy, that the Mafia has something to do with it. So, um, this is Jada, one of the dancers at jack ruby's club there's jack ruby right there with kathy k and alice alexander standing under the carousel burlesque club sign um jack ruby was definitely mob connected he actually had worked for al capone in chicago his real name was jack rubenstein he was a jewish gangster um not italian but so he wasn't a made guy but uh he was nonetheless almost certainly connected Here's an enhanced Zapruder frame that was put in Time magazine uh, showing the frame where President Kennedy was shot from the Zapruder film. Uh, going back to Jim Mars, he Jim Mars suggested in the Zapruder film that they have actually touched it up and edited it a lot. Um, and that's all possible. So this book will give you ideas about uh, the Mafia, if they had contributed assassins, um, and so forth. There's a lot of theories that assassins were, um, provided by the Mafia, and, uh, so they could be disposable people. Mm. That sort of contradicts the whole Charles Harrelson, uh, E. Howard Hunt story too. So I've also heard that the if there was an assassin, it was a French guy. Uh, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff about that. Let's see. Here's two oddball books. Well, I'm not, not really oddball, but two poignant books. Let's put it like that. This is a day in the life of President Kennedy by Jim Bishop, and this is the day Kennedy was shot by Jim Bishop. Uh, a couple weeks before the assassination, Jim Bishop sat with Kennedy for a few weeks to write this book, which was intended to be some um, re-election pop propaganda for him to sort of humanize the president and uh, 
and um, it's bookmark and make him more appealing for uh, you know mass consumption. So his daily routine, how he how he spent time with his wife and kids, and what he ate for breakfast and so forth, how he got along with his staff. Now, interestingly, uh, the book didn't make wasn't even printed until after the assassination. So um, Jim Bishop acknowledges that in this book. But then, when after the book came out, he got in a big feud with Jackie Kennedy. And he got a little bit bitter. He ended up writing this one, The Day Kennedy Was Shot, an uncensored minute-by-minute -minute account. This guy also wrote a book called The Day Lincoln Was Shot. So, and Kennedy knew about it, and he had asked him because he had liked the book, The Day Lincoln Was Shot. So it's extremely ironic that this guy would end up writing The Day Kennedy Was Shot. He also kind of trashes Jackie Kennedy in, in this book a little bit, uh, calling her out for uh, annoying him when he was writing his first his first book. So, um, but this is a straightforward um, hour by hour, minute by minute account of the assassination, and it leans on the Warren Commission. It's not going to go into any conspiracies or anything. Neither one of these books do. Uh, this is a history mystery. Who shot JFK? Um, it's almost written for younger audiences. Um, and I would recommend this if you were a, abs a young person who was very much a, had wanted a casual uh, entrance into the whole Kennedy mythos. You might want to pick up something like this. And you know what? I've got one more to show you. Hold on. Even more than this one, there's this book, which is an illustrated, like, the JFK assassination for dummies, kind of. And that is Who Shot JFK? And this one really is, um, <laughs> clipping. But uh, these are books I would recommend if you wanted to start start beginning say you're watching this video and you don't know half of what i'm talking about here you don't you're not familiar with the names i'm naming you might want to start here to start orienting yourself to it um let's see and then let's see i got another one and this is another one you might want to if you wanted to just get oriented um this is president kenny's been shot and it also has a CD that has all of the moment to moment, the news reports and everything. Uh, it's a it's a real good summary, uh, without any conspiracies, just a summary of the shooting, so you can get familiar with what happened, what was on the radio. It it, it leans heavily on radio and TV coverage, so that's Walter Cronkite. So this would be a good way to start getting familiar with the odd circumstances. So President Kennedy has been shot, then these two. Um, let's see. This is, so once you get comfortable, this is kind of like a index. This is called the assassination of John F. Kennedy, dates, places, people. This is an index in alphabetical order of all the different figures, places, incidents that relate to the assassination. So you can read, you know, some of these. So you can read a few of these, a section at a time, get familiar with who was Jim Braden, who was Dinah Bowen. Um, let me get some coffee. Bethesda Naval Hospital, so forth. Okay. Um, there's also this book, Dallas, 1963. This is an advanced reading copy, Uncorrected Proof Not for Sale, to be published in hardcover October 2013. 
I don't know how I got my hands on this. <laughs> um, this is uh, going along the lines that it was Oswald who did it, and um, so it's not a, it's not really a conspiracy. It touches on the conspiracies, but um, this is a, very much like. Let me show you one more. This is the one that annoys most uh, conspiracy theorists. This is Bill O'Reilly's uh, Killing Kennedy. And Bill O'Reilly has a series of killing books about, you know, killing everyone from Lincoln to, I think he, he has quite a lot of these. But uh, he, he does not, he does not entertain the conspiracies in this. And um, many people, many of the conspiracy theorists just hate this book. Bill O'Reilly sticks to the Warren Commission, and um, I mean, he's not really a, a conspiracy theorist. So there's another one called by, uh, and I don't have it, but. Um, the guy who wrote Helter Skelter also wrote one where he tried to lay the whole conspiracy to rest, kind of like Bill O'Reilly. And, um, so, Bugliosi, Bugliosi, I think his name was. Okay, I'm trying to still show you the straight up ones. Okay, um, set these over here. And I'm going, you know, and... Now, um, okay, uh, not this one. Okay, now we're going to get into the real hard line. Now, we, of course, we did talk about, we talked about garrisons and we talked about um, built, Jim Mars. But let's talk about the real hard line conspiracy books now, where we start to really start pointing fingers and i guess the first one that was really a point a finger pointing was this one uh a texan looks at linden and um this suggested very strongly that linden johnson was behind the assassination without saying it <laughs> but uh and uh among other things the um the soul oh what was the name of the Billy So? Gosh, I'm, my brain is giving up. There was a guy, uh, a, um, uh, one of the government inspectors who got murdered, who um, they uh, Johnson was implicated in murder. The guy was investigating some cotton that had been misrepresented. Uh, so Estes was the guy's name, um, and the guy got murdered by a by a convicted criminal who worked for Johnson. He was a hit. He was also a hitman, and um, uh, when so and there and uh, many people thought that Johnson was facing you know arrest or impeachment or something over that, and that the assassination of Kennedy was a desperate attempt to save himself. Um, that's one of the ideas in that. And we get into this, um, this book is called Blood, Power, Money by Barb McClellan. Uh, how LBJ killed JFK. This is another one of the, um, let me see if I can find the Soas just story here. Um.
Billy Sylvester, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Billy Sylvester was the guy who was like destroying cotton and then claiming he had more cotton or something like that. And then a USDA inspector found out about it and was investigating him. And then that guy was killed, shot several times, but it was, then it was listed as a suicide, even though he was shot several times in the back of the head by a rifle. Um, so that was what, what many people thought was Johnson's ally, or his motive for... Mal Malcolm, I think it was Malcolm Clark or something was the hitman. No, Malcolm Wallace. Yeah, Malcolm Wallace um, was Johnson's like muscle man, hitman. So that's the whole theory about Johnson in a nutshell is that he was in trouble and he was going to face, you know, or Lee at that minimum being removed from Kennedy's ticket. So, um, let me get this book. This is Who Killed Kennedy by Thomas G. Buchanan. This is another one of the uh, contemporary ones. This was published in 64, right after, right immediately after the assassination. Not as well known as Mark Lane's. Mm. So, but, uh, full disclosure, I haven't read this one yet. So, I'm, this is on my list to see what points. I'm not exactly sure what point he's making, but it says here on the back, his book could make a world sensation. It may haunt readers for a long time afterwards. It makes a very intelligent, powerful case for the existence of a, an accomplice who fired the fatal shot. That's by Alistair Cook. Um, you must at once read this exciting and impassioned book. Thomas Buchanan reveals an intellect is clearer. Maybe I did read this one. Gosh, I'm getting confused because I've got so many books. But here's all the different versions. I feel like I actually did read this. Um, so, yeah, this was one of the earliest versions of uh, the idea that um, there was an accomplice, there was a conspiracy who killed Kennedy. This is where we get into Peter Lawford, Kennedy's brother-in-law, who... Um, who supposedly knew everybody, knew all the secrets. Uh, he was one of the last people that talked to Marilyn Monroe. Uh, he was uh, supposedly, they said, the man who had all the answers. He was an actor and a member of the Rat Pack, as you can see. He was kind of drummed out later on. Frank Sinatra got really mad because... Lawford didn't help Frank Sinatra connect with Kennedy like he wanted to. There's Kennedy and Lawford on a yacht right here. And, uh, um, there's Lawford at Kennedy's funeral. He did stay friends with Sammy Davis Jr., they tried to have a comeback movie called Salt and Pepper, but it really didn't do that well. So a lot of people think that Peter Lawford at least knew who killed Kennedy and knew who killed Marilyn Monroe and that the Kennedys were involved. I don't put a lot of uh, in. I don't put a lot of stock into these. This is another one that I do put a little bit of stock into because this is uh, um, speaking is Dr. Charles A. Crenshaw. I'm gonna let this book speak for itself. Um, the Dallas surgeon who fought to save JFK and then shocking days later, Lee Harvey Oswald. Now he gives the testimony he was not allowed to give in the Warren Commission. So in this book, um, Charles Crenshaw, who was one of those surgeons who worked on Kennedy and Oswald, uh, tells what he knows about the wounds and how they contradict from the official story. Um, there's Dr. Red Duke. I don't know if you're from Texas, you might remember Dr. Red Duke as uh, doing little segments on the news about health. Um, 
I'm not going to show you the pictures because they're extremely graphic, but um, this is that's one book that I would think about a little bit. Now, this is another one written by someone who knew Kennedy. This is what really happened to JFK. Um, this lady actually was acquainted with Kennedy, and this is autographed by her. And, um, and very much like the other book I showed you, this is a, a quiz and fact book. And this is kind of presented as a quiz so you can learn about the assassination by asks you questions and then you find the answer. So... And it talks about all these characters, like this Rose Jeremy, a woman who, who claimed that she had knowledge of Kennedy before he was assassinated, that he was going to get killed, and then they didn't believe her, and then she was, she was killed later. Um, oh, there's quite a lot of people. There's Guy Bannister right there. Um... It's, but I tell you what, though, this is an interesting book. There's Kennedy. That's uh, her and her mother meeting Kennedy right there. Her father took these pictures of Kennedy, the author of this book. So there's Jim Garrison, who she really likes. She she quotes him a lot and favorably. There's Hoover. That's a fake Oswald in Mexico City. Um Castro, Marita Lorenz, who uh, supposedly was Castro's lover, who was tied up with the conspiracy. Mary Pinchot Meyer, who was supposedly Kennedy's, uh, one of his mistresses. Mary DeCord Meyer. Ruth Payne, you can still go to her house, she's still alive, and you can visit that house in Dallas where... Marina Oswald lived when they were separated. There's just the cop who was shot. Uh, his name was J.D. Tippett. He was gunned down supposedly by Oswald. Uh, his nickname on the police force was JFK because of his resemblance to Kennedy. There's a weird theory that his body was actually used as the Kennedy's body for autopsy purposes. Lots of lots of crazy stuff, and the more you read, the crazier it gets. U-2 spy plane was, was shot down in Russia shortly after Oswald defected. He used to work on radars when he was in the Marines. The fact that only uh, Clint Hill, Jackie Hill's Secret Service agent, uh, um, <laughs> uh, he was the only one who ran when the shots were fired. There's a lot of weird stuff like this. Jack Ruby again. The Oswald pictures. They said that this was the body used for the uh, Oswald backyard pictures. Roscoe White. And that that was Oswald's head pl plaster on it. Oswald. Mandel Carcano rifle. The bullet. The bullets that uh, were used in evidence. That were, as, as Jim Garrison said, in pristine condition. There's a few other things I want to point out now, uh, just to make you think a little bit before you dive into the conspiracies head first. Mm. This rifle, the Mannlicher Carcano, had a weird muzzle velocity where bullets often did um, stay intact after hitting targets. That's been proven. And the exhibit bullets, they only show you one side, but the other side of it was cleaved completely off, so there was quite a lot of material um re taken off that bullet so there was there's it's not as cut and dried as as it seems i'm not saying that that cracks the case or anything but i'm just saying that much of this evidence you're not getting full stories when you dive into the assassination stuff here's another one it's uh the secret history of assassination this one just includes kennedy but it talks about lots of assassinations so I would, I would call this just something if you're a casual reader. Um, here's another one called Cause of Death by Cyril Wecht. He just recently passed away. Next to Michael Bodner, one of the most famous uh, pathologists in the country. And he uh, worked on all of these people, or at least studied their cases. He wasn't 
um, Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Elvis, um, oh, what's her name, that's, um, oh my gosh, um, yeah, Joanna Capecini from Chappaquiddick, um, so, I, I'm, you know, I, I, he's gonna talk about the bullets here and the magic bullet theory, I'm not a, a doctor, so, I mean, I would trust Cyril Weck's opinion about a lot of this stuff. Michael Bodden has the point of view that there, there wasn't a conspiracy. Uh, the Search for the Murderers of John Kennedy by Robert Sam Anson. They killed our president. Um, this was written 12 years after the assassination. And it reveals scenes from the Zapruder film. Graphic scenes that are... And it shows some of the evidence. Really well put together book. For more advanced study. And the JFK assassination. The facts and the theories. This is another one more for the casual person to get introduced to the different conspiracies. Um, and then, you know, it, it's, it presents them in easy, easy to digest chapters. And now we're getting into more, now we're getting into some straight up uh, conspiracy buff literature here. Now this is uh, the response piece to Case Closed by Bugliosi, Bugliosi uh, Angry Response. Um, and let's see... Oh, I'm sorry, by Gerald Posner. And he is a very angry response to Gerald Posner's book. Full of, uh, this is an emotional book. But it's for advanced conspiracy readers. It's not for, it, I wouldn't jump into this one immediately. Uh, Killing the Truth, Deceit and Deception in the JFK Case. Another one that's pretty advanced. Uh, this is another Bible. Oh, that's sorry. There's some uh, graphic pictures in here. Um, it's just a uh, crazy advanced uh, conspiracy stuff. So I would. This is for deeper reading. After lots of study, it has some. Uh, some of the pictures are a little bit shocking. Now we get into even more fringe stuff. This is Nightmare in Dallas by Beverly Oliver. Uh, she claims to be the babushka lady. And she claims that she was a dancer in the carousel club. There's a lot of doubt about that. This is Beverly Oliver in 1963. She claims she was one of Jack Ruby's strippers. Um, and she talks about Jada being killed and stuff. She claims that she was this babushka lady. Uh, at the assassination, I find a lot of it, her stuff, difficult to believe. So I'm not, I'm not super in agreement with a lot of it. So, um, yeah, I don't think she's super credible. And then finally we get to the straight up crazy conspiracy stuff. Uh, whitewash. Whitewash 2, Whitewash 4. It's hard to find these. People will pay $500 for these books. Um, the Secret Service cover-up. The JFK assassination transcript. These are the Harold Weisberg books. Um, along with... Um, I just had one. Yeah, along with this book by Harold Weisberg. He's a, he is one of the most uh, fringy conspiracy theorists out there. So I wouldn't suggest getting into your Harold Weisberg books until you're much more versed in all this stuff. He's going to assume that you have a pretty working knowledge before he, as he starts talking about stuff. So anyway, there you go. So what happened? I guess you're wondering now, what do I think? Mm. I had to finish that coffee. Um, I think that there's definitely something being hidden. I don't know what. 
I think that there is a lot of uh, uh, cover-up, whether it was just failures of the Secret Service. I want to point out that a lot of the Secret Service men were drinking well into the morning of November 22nd when they should have been sleeping, preparing for the job. There was a lot of failures that day. Uh, I I'm I don't believe the Secret Service were in on it. I don't believe that uh, Johnson was in on it. I uh, think that I think that there's a lot of coincidences too that make it seem weird, like the fact that the mayor of Dallas was the brother of um, the head of the CIA who Kennedy had fired. Uh, uh, I mean, there, there's just there's a lot to, to there's just a lot to unpack. I do think that there's something weird about it, though. I don't think it's, it's it, I don't think it's what we saw in the movie JFK, and I don't know if you're gonna find the answers in these books. Maybe. I don't think that we're gonna know the answers in our lifetime. Honestly, I don't even think we know the answers to who killed President Lincoln. I think that some conspiracies are never going to be solved or some mysteries are never going to be solved. We don't know what happened to Lindbergh's kid. We don't know what happened uh, with the Zodiac. There's just some things that may never be unsolved and we may just have to accept that. And this may be one of them. You can read all of this. You can come up with your own theories. But I don't really think the answers are here. Uh or maybe parts of the stories or parts of the answers. And I think that all the people who know are, are gone. They all died. So, and they took it with them. They didn't write it down on a piece of paper. They didn't leave it in a document. They didn't, you know, I mean, they kept it a secret if they survived. There was a lot of people who died around the time of the Kennedy assassination. And then again in 1975 and the joint, the, Senate Subcommittee on Assassinations, those two time frames, there's hundreds of mysterious deaths of people connected to this. And I'll tell you what, if anyone survived who knew what was going on, they weren't talking, and they're gone now. So that's what I think. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you just, if you want to read about conspiracies for fun and amusement, there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't get carried away with it because you can go down some weird rabbit holes with this stuff and it can make you start to think of a world that isn't exactly the real world. So, um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this all the same and I'll see you again. So, bye.